and welcome to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today's puzzle hails from the brain of Demono, uh, a truly demonic constructor, actually. So his pseudonym is extremely um, uh, apposite. Uh, and I'm sure many of you remember everything is Roggen. I certainly do. Uh, it still brings me out in a cold sweat. Um, and today we've got the Halloween crab, <laughs> um, which, uh, well, you can sort of see the picture of the crab here. In fact, if I show you what a real Halloween crab looks like, it looks like this. And you can see that this, the representation Demono has drawn is incredibly accurate. You know, it's got a sort of black head with yellow eyes and purple pincers. <laughs> That's exactly what we've got drawn in this grid, even down to the yellow eyes. So it's rather wonderful. Um, and uh, it's a very interesting take on Arrow Sudoku as well. So I'll read you out the rule. rule well, I'll read you out the rules in a moment. Um, I have had my second COVID jab today, so goodness only knows what that does to one Sudoku scanning. But I can tell you now, if there are any 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 poor scanning today, it's clearly the result of the jab. Um, what else to mention? Well, over on Patreon, we have just released the solution video to our Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy Sudoku Hunt. I know so many of you have enjoyed that. Um, and in fact, several of you did Zoom your entries over to us overnight. So very well done to Greg Kovar, Leslie Haber, Jean-Paul, uh, Steve Trigidjo, I think, uh, and Kay Menons, all of whom uh, snuck in before the deadline and very well done to all of you um, and yeah I've got nothing else to tell you so with that I'm going to read you out the rules of the Halloween crab maybe I'll get rid of the highlighting though first uh, control a I think we can do that with there we go because I don't really want to worry about uh, crab size etc while I'm trying to solve the puzzle now here are the rules normal Sudoku rules apply in cages, digits must sum to the small clue in the top left corner of the cage, and digits cannot repeat within a cage, so completely normal uh, killer Sudoku rules. Uh, and here's the difference now. Cells along an arrow must strictly increase towards the circle and must sum to the digit in the circle. So the arrows work normally in terms of, you know, you add up the digits along the arrow and you plonk that in the circle, but these arrows are almost like thermometers because we have to almost treat the, the arrow tip as the bulb of a thermo. Well, we could actually do that. And then the digits are going to have to increase all the way. Actually, I've just realized they're going to increase all the way, of course, into the circle. Because if we go, I don't know, one, five there, this square will axiomatically, because it's going to be the sum of one and five be a six, and therefore it will also be greater than this digit. So these are like reverse thermos on all of these arrows. It's a lovely idea. Um, yeah, so do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video. I have no idea how hard this is, I'm afraid to tell you. So you will have a better guess uh, than I will if you look at the length of the video. Um, and the way to play, I can't remember if I said this, is to click the link under the video. I think I did say it. Anyway, now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Um, and let's get cracking. How are we going to get cracking here? The first thing that I am seeing or that I'm interested in at least, is that combination. That looks very cluttered in terms of stuff going on with the, the cages and the arrows. Um, I don't think I've got any three cell arrows, have I? No, I haven't. That's a bit annoying. Um, Maybe, in fact, maybe I'm wrong, actually. Maybe it's not just those two. I'm now thinking maybe it's these four, sort of a big noughts and crosses board of some sort of set theory that we're going to have to think about. Um, there isn't anything I can say about the... Oh, actually, there is something I can say. I've just figured out. Right, I was about to say there isn't anything I can say about the arrows, but there is. Let me just highlight all of the arrow tips in this puzzle, because just in case we have four of them in the same... Oh, we don't. Oh, that's annoying. No, the thing I noticed about the arrows... Oh, well, the, specifically the tip of an arrow is you can never put a five in the tip of an arrow because if the tip of the arrow is a five, as you move up, you've got to go higher to a higher digit. 
So you'd have to go 5, 6, and that would mean the circle would have to sum to a two-digit number, which is impossible. So you can, I think, put 4 on an arrow tip, because plus 5 would be a 9, and that would work. But you can't have a digit higher than 4. Now, if we look, there are some rows and columns here that are very cluttered. We've almost got quadruples in row 3, row 7, column three oh, that's all okay um right i've got i don't really know what i'm going to do here i'm going to look at what what struck me first of all so let's look at this row and this column um and let's think about this in terms of set i think because what is set well basically it's a way of combining uh, different rows and columns and boxes of the grid in order to deduce things so let me just stare at this and see if i can see anything interesting at all uh, we've done quite a few puzzles recently where things in different set elements cancel when they're because i realize i'm making no sense if you don't know what set is this is going to make no sense so let me just have a stare at this for a second and then we can Well, there's, there's a little thing going on here. Yeah, OK, so. Right, let's think about the, this purple set of digits, i.e. The, the whole of row three. Now, I think it's very clear that the whole of row three contains one set of the digits one to nine. If we, if we got the puzzle correct, that would be what would appear in row three of the grid. So this, the purples constitute one set of the digits one to nine. Now, obviously, the blues constitute one set of the digits one to nine as well because that's the complete column of the grid so we can delete this cell from both sets and say that the sets are still equivalent because whatever this digit is has just been deleted from purple and from blue so the sets are still exactly equal now what we can do now i think is to start removing for example if i remove those two squares from blue i can remove this square from purple and state that pur purple and blue must still add up to the same number because let's do this slowly if i know know that the digits in purple at the moment and the digits in blue are the same digits obviously they have the same total so if i remove the cells on an arrow from blue and the cell in the circle in purple, there I'm removing the same total di total sum from both sets. So those can disappear, these can disappear, and this is what I noticed before, because now I've managed to get a well, there's a big discrepancy between these two digits now. Because at this point we know that the purples, if we sum all the digits that appear in the purples and all the digits that appear in the blues, we're going to get the same number. But we also know that those four squares and add up to 27, but those four squares add up to 20. So this is going to have to be an enormous digit, and this is going to have to be a very tiny digit. So if this, and we can see that very simply, if this was a 1, then these sum to 28. That means those have to sum to 28, which means this has to be an 8. So there's hardly any degrees of freedom here. This could be a 1 or a 2, and this has to be 8 or 9. Now that might, does that do anything? The answer might be no, <laughs> sorry. Um, no, the answer's, oh, okay, sorry. That doesn't seem to do very much, but it was, well, I still thought it was a bit interesting. Maybe we'll try the noughts and crosses grid. Let's see if the noughts and crosses grid looks better. So let's do all of those squares in purple this time and all of these squares in blue. Uh, so again, now purples must be two sets of the digits one to nine, as must blues. If we delete the common digits from both sets, we know these sets are equivalent. And there are loads, I can't actually, I'm not going to be able to visualize this, I don't think, but I can see lots of opportunities to cancel out things that are in blue with cancel, with things that appear in purple. These two squares are the, will have the same sum as that square, so we can delete those. 
that one and that one must be deleted. That one and that, those ones must be deleted. That one and those ones. This one and those ones, this one and those ones. We're going to get rid of almost everything here. Have I just proved that sort of one equals one or something? That's what I'm now worried about. Those get deleted. Right. That, okay, well that's quite interesting. So now we know that these purples add up to the same number as these blues which means this digit's going to have to be small and this so it's the exact opposite of those two so those two have to di differ by 7 and then these have to differ by 7 in the other direction that's rather cute so ah oh, no oh bobbins i thought i was going to get a oh that's weird for some reason i thought i was going to get a fourth low digit in column seven but i haven't oh because i only had two low digits in column seven to start with so now i've got yeah now i've managed to get three low digits in each of row three row seven column three column seven but i haven't got a fourth yet oh um okay uh, <laughs> right, sorry, let's have another think. I'm running out of sets to do here though now. Uh, oh, I should always check Fistamafel whenever we're thinking about sets. I don't think this is Fistamafel, although it does, it is quite interesting with the way these two sort of reach into box. Uh, seven. So Fistamafel is the theorem that sa says that these 16 cells are the exact equivalent of these 16 cells. Um, but here it's quite difficult to see, or at least for me to see anyway, how though that ring is working. It's almost like what Dimono's done is No, I'm sorry, I'm not spotting something there. I have a horrible feeling there is something there I can do. I'm just not quite understanding it. Oh dear. Right, okay, so what else can we do? Can we do more with the... 27 in four cells is quite a large cage, actually. That's got to have a nine in it, doesn't it? Eight, seven, six, and five only add to 26. So there is a nine in here. don't see how to use that it doesn't even have to be in the well it's probably not in the circle it could well be here um hmm. oh dear so ah hang on hang on a minute hang on a minute column three Oh, it doesn't work. Bother. I was just noticing that column three has six digits on arrows. So if we think about what those digits, what's the minimum those digits could be? One, two, three, four, five, and six. They're all in the same column, so they have to be different. They add to 21, but look at the, where the circles are. They're all in different, well, one of them is not in the same column. They're in those three positions. So I can't actually restrict the circles by arguing oh well all the circles have to contain different digits here they do not same is true in row seven look i've got six digits there as well oh bother oh this is a worry now because i'm actually i'm actually running out of good ideas Um, so, maybe we don't use set at all, and that's the worrying thing about that is that I just do not see, I just don't think we've got enough information, we've got to find something, it must be something to do with the cages, that's my feeling, because the cages are the only thing that sort of 
gives you a grip on the, on the relative values of the, of the things in the puzzle. So how do we use this cage, or this cage, or how do we use them together? I've already tried to use them together, so maybe I've got to use them separately. Maybe I can use the fact that there's all these arrow cells. Let's try that, actually. That's not so stupid. Let's try that. I'm actually going to get rid of this highlighting. This highlighting is disturbing me. Right, let's look at this. Row 7 and this cage. Now, I know that red, right, let's go to the very basics of the secret. We, we've already talked about the fact that a complete row of the grid, some will contain all of the digits 1 to 9. So I know that the red squares add up to 45, because that's what we get if we add up the digits 1 to 9. I know yellow axiomatically adds to 20. So I know that red minus yellow adds up to 25. And the interesting thing about that, so, so this square obviously is in both sets. So this accounts for none of the difference between the red cells and the yellow cells. We can just cancel that. But I can actually cancel those out because those are in red. They sum to the same as that. And these out as well. So at this point, we've got red minus yellow equals 25, which is almost quite interesting because that does, yeah, that's almost quite interesting because that has to be quite low, which implies these have to be relatively high, but maybe not high enough. Oh, hang on, I can put that one there. Hang on, that is interesting. Right, look at this. If I get rid of these two, and replace it with this one cell. That's huge. Oh, I see. No, it's more an arrow feature. This is what I wasn't understanding. Look, these two squares together can never add to more than nine. So when I was first looking at this, I was thinking, oh, this can be a four, this could be an eight or something like that. But that's nonsense. Those two together can only add up to nine. So those three squares minus that square oh it's forced it's completely forced that is absolutely beautiful because these three squares minus that square add up to 25 well how how big could we make those red squares if i if i double nine in the circles and put eight there that's 26 that's the absolute maximum i can put into that triple so it must be 26 and that must be one qed and that now is a difference of 25, and there is no way I could have got those to have a higher, a higher difference. That's a beautiful. I mean, it's just, it's ridiculously clever. Ridiculously clever. Um, of Dimono. But at least I've managed to start the puzzle now. I've got four digits for the price of one. And... Why, why have I got sevens in there? I don't know why I've got seven. I was trying to delete a one, I think, from those. Don't think I've quite... No, I haven't. Um, but can I do the same thing with this cage, then? Uh, so, to do the same thing with this cage, I need to think about this column, don't I? trying to think originally I was thinking about trying to do the column or row that had lots of arrow cells versus the cage so it's this column would be interesting versus this cage let's uh, let's get rid of this highlighting again and see if we can do a similar trick we'll use different colors this time uh, because some colors can wear out if you use them more than once you know they 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 lose their powers but purple and green have still got all their powers so we'll see if we can find out something here so that one's in both sets these two add up to that these two add up to that oh yeah okay so we actually end up with the same 
the same three cells here. This is good. Now this is perfect because I know what these add up to. Right, let's do this slowly. We knew that column added up to 45. This cage added up to 27. So the difference between purple and green was 18. Now the difference between purple and green is still 18. I've, all I've done is eliminated the same things totaling the same thing from both sides of the equation. So that square's got to be an eight. Um, and in my 27 cage, I need a nine because I need one. Otherwise it won't add up. And that nine's going there because these nines are franking those two cells. Nine is now in one of those two squares in box seven. Nine can never be there. Nine's in one of three positions in box five. 27, these two squares sum up to 10. Ah, that's interesting because now I've got a, I've got a virtual quadruple in row three because I know that these two squares, if, if you're making 10 in two digits, you must always have a low digit and a high digit. So one of the digits is a one, two, three, or four. The other is a six, seven, or it's not an eight or a nine. So in fact, what have we got there? We've got three, seven, or four, six, but one of these is definitely a three or a four. So if we take those five cells together, we have found ourselves a one, two, three, four quadruple, which means those two squares have to be five, six, or seven, don't they? Um, which means that square is at least six. This square is relatively, oh no, it can still be as high as five. Bother. Uh, it can't be one because there's a one here. This square has to be Ooh, that could be as high as six. We're getting into the realms of crazy levels of pencil marking here, um, which is not a place I like to live in at all. Does not suit me. Um, okay, can we do anything else here? What do we know about? We know about a bit about eights, which I've not really thought about. We know a little bit about nines. We know a tiny bit about ones. Which... Ah, no. Ah, okay. Okay, I've seen something here. That's really strange. What I've got to remember is the thermometer rules here. Each of these arrows is like a thermometer. And what can you not do on a thermometer in a Sudoku? You can never put one or nine in the middle cell of a thermometer. So that square can't be a one, that square can't be a one, and that square can't be a one. So where do you put one in column three? And the answer is not here because that will have to be an eight and it can't be to make nine. So that's not a one and the one can only go there by the power of magic. And that's almost true. This puzzle is magic. Now we've got ones here. We do, yeah, we've got a one in one of those. So that square's got to be a one, I think. Now we can't put one here because that's in the middle of a thermo, uh, which means one's in one of those. Which, um, does that matter? Well, that means that's not one, I suppose. So maybe, maybe we repeat the trick in this row now. Oh, please. I've just noticed this can't be a one because that would have to be an eight to make the nine. So, dum, 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 dum. This, I think, is good. It is. This is going to be the one. Where does the one go in row seven? It's not here. It's not here, that's partially along a thermo stroke arrow. It's not here by Sudoku. It's not here, partially along a thermo. It's not in any of those squares for reasons we've discussed. It goes there. So that's not a one. That's not a one. 
one in the central box now can't be in the middle cross can't be in the um can't be in i was about to say the bulb of the thermo it can't be in the you know the bulb of the arrow thing um so one is in one of those three cells uh, that's not quite as good is it what a fascinating puzzle right okay so what can we say now we can say that squares a two by the power of sudoku that's not a two this square is now restricted because if we know it's adding up to nine and this is now down to a sensible number of digits that's a five or a six that's not a two this this circle is now a huge number because if this is a minimum of three this must be at least four so we know that squares at least a seven now this square uh, it's not that good. It's, it can't be great. I oh, know it's got to be greater than three. Hang on. Four, five, or six then. Can't be more than six because three plus seven is ten. So we've got a very, we're very close to something interesting in box three. Let me just think about this for a second. We're in, in row three, we know one of those two squares has to be a five. Oh, stop, stop it, stop it. I've just had a thought. I've just had a thought. There was a relationship between that and that, wasn't there? Isn't that the first thing I discovered? Yes, I did. I discovered there was a relationship between those two things. Once this is a two, that has to be seven different because it had to be equal to the difference between those two cages. So that's a nine. which is, yes, that gives me a digit here. I was about to say it was useless, which would have been maligning this, this cell unfairly. This is six, seven or eight. Um, how many nines have we got? We've got some. Don't think I can see what we can do with these now. Um, Uh, yeah, and what was I thinking about? One of those two squares has to be a five. So if that's a five, these would have to be a two, three pair. Is there anything wrong with that? Oh, here's a thought. Where is eight in this column? Yeah, this is nice. Where is eight in the column? Well, the answer is it can't be there because this 20 cage hasn't got a 9 in it and it has got a 1 in it so if there was no 8 in this cage in this cage here the maximum those three squares could be would be 5 6 and 7 which add to 18 18 plus 1 is 19 it's not 20 so there is an 8 in one of oh in fact there's an 8 in one of those circles look because of this 8 which means that's not an 8 this is 6 or 7 so this is not 7 oh good grief this is is this a quintuple then? That is a quintuple because it, it contains the digits two, three, four, five, and six, and there are five of those digits. So seven, eight, and nine get locked into the top of box three. One of these is an eight, so whichever one it is, well, if it's that one, we get a seven here. And the other two digits in this cage adding up to 11 and they are not 2, 9 or 3, 8. So they're either 4, 7 or 5, 6. Hmm. Okay. Sorry about this. I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure what I should be doing here. I feel like it's this box that's important because that's the, I've got so much in it. Either this box or this row. Right, good grief. This is absolutely beautiful. This square is a six. 
Right, this is absolutely beautiful because we can just do maths. Maths is our friend. Those squares add up to 29. Those add up to 16 because of the secret. These squares must add up to 45 minus 29. So if that's the case, look at this square. If these four squares add up to 16, this square has the same value as those two. So that means those five squares add up to 16. And if these five squares add up to 16 in the same box, they must be one, two, three, four, and six. Therefore, there's no five in them. Therefore, that square's a six. That is absolutely gorgeous. That means that's a seven. That, there's no five here. So this is a two, three, four, triple. Five in the box is now forced into that square. So that means this square is now an eight or a nine. Five in this row is now forced into, oh, this is huge. Five in the row is now forced to be here. And once that happens, how do we make this work? This is so cool because not only do we know it's a two, three pair, but because of the weird rising arrows thing, we know that this is the bulb of the thermo. So it goes two, three, four, that becomes a nine. Um, okay, is that, have we finished the puzzle now? Somehow I doubt it, but that did feel right. Oh, lovely, right, now that domino is a three seven pair, which means this square is limited to being two or six, which, we might be able to do something with, but I can't see how to. So let's do some more Sudoku. There's fives there. Twos are in one of these squares. These three squares are now a bit restricted. Look, they've got to be five, six, and eight in some order. We know this one's not eight. Okay, which is something but doesn't seem to be resolving anything so what have we really learnt as a result of this shenanigans we've done up here have we learnt something very profound or not really i've got a five six pair in i've got a five six pair in row seven Oh, that's only just happened as a result of this two, three, four. So that might be helpful. Um, we need twos, threes, fours, and oh, we need to put a seven in one of these squares. So these squares here are, oh, we can't, hang on, hang on. We can't put a two partially along either of the, oh, we could put a, no, we can't, ah, I'm getting all confused. Yeah, where does two go? In fact, in row seven, that's the sensible question. I've just realized it can't go here because this can't be a three. And it can't go here because that can't be a one. Two goes there out of nowhere. Which doesn't actually seem to do very much, but it was very strange. Um, I've probably missed these sorts of deductions all over this puzzle. Because I'm just not looking for them. Anyway, now I've got effectively six digits. So these squares have got to be three, four, or seven. Now, this cannot be seven. Oh, so where does seven, I see. Where does seven go now in this row? Can't go here because that can't be nine. So this square, once it's not seven, there's a three, four pair in the row. That becomes a seven. One plus seven is, yep, here's a knowledge bomb, eight. <laughs> um... I've now got a five, six pair here. I've got an eight here. So eight has to go in one. Oh, eight, eight can't go on this arrow. So eight goes there. Eight goes in one of these three squares. How peculiar, right. Two plus three is five, two plus four equals six. So this, this arrow looks correct to me. Um, and <laughs> what shall we do now? We'll probably find 
that there's all sorts of places. You see, I'm wondering about something like this or this. Can we get any joy from those squares? So if we've got in both situations, we've got two, two plus or two or three or four plus something equals nine. So these squares have to be five, six or seven, I think in both instances. Now that can't be seven. This one can be seven. Okay. So where do we look now? And what is the weak digit in this puzzle? Anyone got any ideas? Um, I don't know. It could be. Uh, it could be two. Can we do more with twos or ones maybe? One is definitely not on an arrow. It's, it's all about where ones can go on arrows. One can't go there. One can't go here or there. So one's in one of three places in box four. Hmm. Okay, I'm getting stuck. This is not good. Were there any of the sort of geometry relationships we established that I've not used? There was something between those two, something between those two. I've used all those. Was there anything else? They had to add up to 16. That's all working. I don't think there was much else. Threes, fours. This seven, is that useful? So seven has become a bit restricted. Look, in box five, it's got to be in one of those positions. Oh, look, I see what I've got here. I've got this squares resolved because the two here is definitely locked there. Now that square doesn't seem to be able to be a two. So that's a six. That gets me a couple more digits. Look, sevens and threes go in. That's not a seven anymore. So seven is on this domino. Three is not in those squares. Oh, well, one thing I know about a nine is it's odd. So if I add an even digit to something to get an odd digit, this square's got to be odd. That's got to be five, which means that's a four. This is a two and that's a seven. Good grief. Good grief. Right. Now that's got to be helpful, hasn't it? The answer is... <laughs> I don't know. Seven has to be in one of those squares. Um, two can't, ah, look, two can't be on this arrow anymore. So this square is restricted. That's got to be five or six. It's not five, so that's six. That's three. Now we're suddenly cooking with gas. This is a two, four, five triple, which means the rest of this row is ones, threes, and sixes. That's not a one. That's not a six. That's not a, ah, uh, that's not actually useful um, what next do we do we know anything about anything <laughs> this is not a five sorry I'm realized that my uh, well this jab has obviously affected my ability to think quite badly um, four five seven nine here three six four five Ah, there's something. That can't be 4-5. If this, if this arrow is a 4-5 arrow, there's a 4-5 in those three squares, so you've got to put 4-5 in that domino. Whereas I seem to have 7s in this domino from there. Yeah, that, so you can't put 4-5 on this arrow, or you have to put 4-5 and 7 in those three, two squares, which is impossible. So this is a 3-6 arrow, which means that's a 1, that's a 3, and that's a 6. This square is a four, which means that's a six and that's a five. Now those two squares have got to be one, which we can place, and seven, and that gives us the top of the grid. 
and those two squares now have got to be a 4-5 pair which we can't do but that felt like a big breakthrough now let's check these squares out these are twos eights and nines we've got a nine franking this one nothing else those squares are going to be three four and five boom that's boom 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 no good um okay so what shall we do now um i don't know i've not used this one yet no it's not immediately obvious to me that i can but let's have a think i suppose this square has to be oh that can't be a th ah this is interesting sorry this this one is it might even be forced i've just seen this can't be a three because if it's a three that's a five which it can't be it clearly can't be a four or a five so it's at least six and it can't be seven because that gives it a nine. Oh, good grief right okay that is a six that's an eight i had no no way of knowing that i dispute whether this was an obvious thing um now one by sudoku goes here which means that's not a one one can't go in a in a bulb slash arrow thing so one's in oh yeah in fact where's one in box five now it's got to be here which means that squares a one which is quite a surprise these squares are now known they're two three and seven two three and seven go in that's not seven so this column needs four ah look where does eight go in column two it's got to go at the top which places a five as well which places a five and a four it gives me a four here this square's got to be a seven still seems to be holding together uh this is a two oh this is a two nine pair in row two so that's a nine that's a two that's no number of two that's going to put pressure on this arrow i think um let's check that in fact this is a three or a four now so we immediately know this is at least a seven which it can't be so this is now an eight or a nine which means this square can't be a seven anymore because that would make three plus seven equals ten so that's not seven which means that seems to be a seven. This square here has got to be at least equal to five. Can't be double four, so it has to be at least five. Can be six, can't be seven. So this is a five or a six. Those squares are three, four, and six. That's not six, that's not three. And we must have, I am a little bit confident I'm going to be able to solve this, but I, I, sh, I shouldn't get overly confident, and I'm not. Um, this column is 3, 4, 5, and 6. Uh, that's not really very good, is it? So that's 3, 5, or 6, I think. Although that does give us a triple in this row. I've got a three five six three five six triple in row five now, so that can't be three. Which means this square is two or nine. It can't be seven because of this. It can't be three, five, or six because of the triple. So this is two or nine. Ah, I'm sure this is probably crackable now. I'm just not seeing how to do it. It's very very frustrating right what's this square then oh nine oh, oh but i've got nine in three positions so although i can get rid of nine from here i can't get rid of it from the domino so this square is two four five or six it can't be five or six this is two or four so there's a two three four triple in row four now that's not two or one so this is now an eight nine pair still not done ah uh, two, three, four. Oh, good grief. And this doesn't even get restricted beyond this. Two, three, four, or eight. I have a horrible feeling I've messed up. I've just realized, yeah, my arm is beginning to ache. Um, do, 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 do. Okay. How do I do this then? It must be this arrow. This arrow must in some way be important. Uh, 
Um, six in row five has to be in one of those squares. Surely that's going to force it. How can I force this to be a six? Yeah, there you go. This can't be a three. If that's a three, this is forced to be a six and that's forced to be a four. And six plus four is ten, not any of those digits. So that is not three. So this is a five, six pair now. That means that square's a three. That means that square's a four. That square's a five. Now is that crack? Ah, maybe that has cracked it. Maybe. Or maybe not. This has become a two. Ah, look, yes, it has. Because this two gives us that square's a nine. Which means that's an eight, which means we now know that must be a three, five pair. That goes to six. That's a five and a four. Six goes in up here, four goes here, three goes here, and hopefully two, three, that's got to be four, I think. That's a seven and that's a two. And that is the puzzle finished. Wow, that was beautiful. That's, that's just an incredibly good idea. These sort of weird reverse thermo type arrows. But actually the way the break-ins were stunning. There was all sorts going on with these sort of row three, row seven, column three, column seven. I suspect there were many ways I could have done that more efficiently. Um, but it was really beautiful to work out there was a relationship between these two and these two. But the thing that got me into it was thinking about the differences between rows and cages which is something I've not seen very well ever before. I'm not sure I have seen that ever before, but I do love the way constructors are using arrows now in sort of set relationships because they're cancelable. It's just beautiful. And this is fair because it's sort of, because the pattern of the geometry is shouting at you that this is going on. I mean, when I first looked at the puzzle, this was what I th was thinking about. But you study it at all and you start seeing that there's an awful lot of packing going on into these positions. I absolutely love that. Really class. Um, let me know how you got on. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.